perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse. Lesson 5.1a, we're beginning chapter 5, all about properties and attributes of triangles. The geometry playlist is in, linked in the description if you need it. When a point is the same distance from two or more objects, the point is considered to be equidistant from the objects. This green point is 10 centimeters from point A, and it's 10 centimeters from point B. It's equidistant from point A and B. So here's the perpendicular bisector theorem. It says if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So we've got segment XY here, and it's perpendicular to AB. That means YA is congruent to YB right here. And our conclusion is that XA is equal to XB. So we need a perpendicular bisector to prove a point is equidistant from endpoints of a segment. We can prove that one side of a triangle is equal to another side. We can prove that this orange side is congruent to this orange side. Now, if you take a look at this, we have L, that's a perpendicular bisector. We have this segment is congruent to this segment. We can see it, this is a right angle, so that must be a right angle, right? Because that's a bisector, all right? And we know if that's a bisector and it's perpendicular that Y is equidistant, isn't it? So we have a paragraph proof. It says, since L is the perpendicular bisector of AB, then L is perpendicular to segment AB, and Y is the midpoint of segment AB. By definition of perpendicular, angle AYX, this angle here, and angle BYX, this angle here, are right angles, and angle AYX is congruent to angle BYX. And by the definition of a midpoint, segment AY is congruent to segment BY. And by the reflexive property of congruence, segment XY is congruent to segment XY. So the segment XY for this triangle is congruent to the XY for this triangle. That's the reflexive property of congruence. So triangle AYX, this one here, is congruent to triangle BYX, this one here, by side angle side. We have a side, an angle, and a side, SAS. And segment XA is congruent to segment XB. This is congruent to this. By CPCTC, that's corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Therefore, XA equals XB, this equals this, by the definition of congruent segments. Now here's the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. It says if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So we can see now this is congruent to this, and we can see XA is equal to XB. Our conclusion is that XY, this segment, is perpendicular to AB, and YA is congruent to YB. A locus is a set of points that satisfies a given condition, and the perpendicular bisector of a segment can be defined as the locus of points in a plane that are equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. And the word locus comes from the Latin word for location. And the plural of locus is loci. We pronounce it loci, all right? So it's just a set of points that satisfies a given condition, all right? Applying the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse, we can find each measure. So to find YW, we have YW, so it's this question mark here. We're looking for this measure. Well, we see that XW is 7.3. So YW equals XW because of that perpendicular bisector theorem. We've got a side, an angle, and a side. Well, that's bisecting it, right? And they're congruent parts of congruent triangles. So if that's 7.3, that must be 7.3, okay? And take a look at this diagram. We're looking for BC. So that's this segment right here. Well, since AB, which is 36, is equal to AC, which is 36, and L is perpendicular to BC, L is the perpendicular bisector of segment BC by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. And BC, this segment right here, is equal to 2 times CD. 
So CD is 16. If D is equidistant, because this is a bisector, then that must be 16. So it's 2 times 16. That means BC is 32. Now let's look for PR. That would be this one. It says it's 2N plus 9. Well, PR and RQ are equal to each other because of the perpendicular bisector theorem. We know this is congruent to this. We know that's a right angle. That's a right angle. So this is equal to this, and that's our equation. 2N plus 9 equals 7N minus 18. We can solve for N. We can get rid of this 2N from each side of the equation, and we're left with 9 equals 5N minus 18. We can get rid of this negative 18 by adding 18. We get 27 equals 5N. We divide both sides by this 5 coefficient, and we get 5.4 is equal to N. Well, if this is 2N plus 9, it must be 2 times 5 plus 4. 5.4 plus 9. And we do that and we get 19.8. So for the perpendicular bisector theorem, we need a perpendicular bisector to conclude that a point on it is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment. And for the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, we need to have a point equidistant from the endpoints of a segment to conclude that the point is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So if you notice, this had the blue first and then the pink, this has the pink first and then the blue, because the converse of a theorem swaps the hypothesis and conclusion. We talked about that before. Our next lesson is angle bisector theorem and its converse, that's 5.1b. So make sure you wrote down these theorems if you needed to, and I hope the day goes well for you and you get everything done you need to do and I hope everyone's kind to you and I'll see you next time. Bye.